here in the middle of California. You can see that little sun dock down there on the map. Uh, we're about an hour and a half south of San Francisco. So why crop planting? Let me tell you a story. So I was visiting one of our school gardens in Watsonville. The teacher came out with these transplants. They made these pumpkin transplants and she was so excited. She's like, yeah, we've, we made these transplants. D do you think they'll grow? It was October. So now the issue is pumpkins are warm season crops and they need extra daylight and extra warmth to make that whole summer growth period to make that beautiful fruit, a pumpkin that we harvest in the fall. So of course, planting her pumpkins in October was not the best idea, but as we know, in gardening, there are no mistakes, only experiments. I encourage her to plant those with her kids and watch what happens. And that would be a lesson they would never forget. So that's one of the reasons we wanna talk about crop planting. We want to have more success growing our fruits and vegetables in our school gardens, especially for folks that are new to gardening. It's a really simple concept. Today, our agenda, we're gonna define some concepts um, and definitions. We're gonna practice some crop planting math and I'm gonna leave your state teams with some additional resources and practice that you can do uh, with your state groups. So first thing to understand is how our school is set up. Uh, for most schools, traditional schools, the winter is the bulk of our school year and we're left with these warm shoulders. So we're really stuck with the worst time to grow things, uh, the cold times, especially in the northern climates. And so for us to grow um, a lot of our crops, we have to work on the spring into the summer and we have to plant in the late spring and then someone has to take care of our crops over the summer and then we can come back and harvest them in the fall or if you're in a place that's not too freezing cold or if you're in a warm place like the south or in hawaii you can probably grow quite well over the winter months as well so um, unfortunately um, the way our school systems are set up our calendars and the way the climate works for most of us we're, we're left with the most not the most opportune times to grow but that doesn't mean we can't make a plan that's successful and that's what we're going to talk about today so it's not just um the temperature, it's also daylight that decreases um, in the winter months and plants, you know, vegetable crops need at least six hours of, of direct sunlight to, to grow productively. And we can see as, as the winter comes, daylight hours decrease. So big concept to understand is the difference between warm season and cool season crop. In a lot of school gardens, we're gonna go to the cool season crops. And what I mean by that, those are crops that can withstand frost often or cooler temperatures. They can also withstand warmth, maybe not extreme warmth, but they're tolerant of cooler times. Whereas the warm season crops, they won't make it in cold times. They need the warmth to grow. And so when we're making our schoolyard planting plants, we think about our cool season crops where we could plant them in the late summer and we harvest them into the winter, or we plant them as early as we can in the spring and hopefully harvest them before school gets out as it starts to warm up. For our warm season crops, in most areas, we plant them in the spring once it warms up. They grow all summer, depending on if someone's there to care and water and weed for the plants. And then the plants will be ready to be harvested when we get back into the schools in August and September. In some areas where it's extremely hot, warm season crops are planted a little bit differently. So check based on your region. So how do you know if you have a warm season or a cool season crop? It'll tell you on the seed packet usually. So you can see on the seed packet there on the left, there's this planting guide and it talks about in different climate zones when to plant things. The cucumber there says, this is a warm season crop. Obviously you can find this stuff online. There's planting guides. Hopefully you have regional planting guides um, that will, will give you this information. Another thing that you'll um, find when you read seed packets and or uh, planting guides, they'll refer to um, your average last frost date and they'll say transplant X weeks after your average last frost date or start indoors six weeks before your average last frost date. So knowing your average last frost date is a really good tool to understand when you're going to plant your different um, crops and if they'll succeed um, and in which temperature ranges they'll succeed in. Hopefully you have some great regional planting guides or your food court um, state has some great schoolyard planting guides for you. Um, here's just a couple, a schoolyard planting guide for cool and, season, cool, cool and warm season crops, um, 
Washington, D.C. school garden planting calendar, Tucson, Arizona, a school garden planting calendar. What's nice about these, which are all linked to in the resources I'm going to share, um, these are meant to be interpreted and read with a school calendar in mind. You will also find regional planting guides that aren't school specific, but you can obviously adapt them to work for your school year calendar. So let's take a look at some of our cool season crops. So we've got lettuces and turnips and beets and cauliflower and carrots and chard and bok choy and the other Asian greens and celery and artichokes and collard greens and those radishes there and broccoli and kale. And asparagus comes out in the early, early spring. So there are plenty of things we can grow in those cool seasons where we're primarily in school. And it happens to be that these are our root stems, leaf and flower bud crops. So we got our root crops. We got some of our crops that we actually eat stems from them. We've got our leafy crops and we got our flower bud crops. So that's kind of an easy way for you to think about once you start learning about the six plant parts, root stems, leaf and flower buds are primarily the ones that withstand cooler seasons. Our warm season crops, sunflower seeds. Corn. If you're not gonna be around in the summer to harvest that sweet corn, consider growing popcorn, which will dry in the field and be waiting for you when you get back in the fall. We got fruiting things like cucumbers and melons, um, cherry tomatoes and other types of tomatoes and beans. Same deal as with the corn. If you're not around to be picking beans, the, the fresh snap beans, the ones you eat um, when they're soft, uh, you, you might not want to plant those over the summer if no one's going to be there to harvest them every week. I mean, you want to plant a dry bean or a shelling bean, and ones that could just dry out there in the field or the garden, and then you can make soups with them. Same story with the squashes, zucchinis. If you don't harvest it within a week, window the thing will swell into a baseball bat size and they're just like almost unusable at that time but your hard squashes like pumpkins and butternut and acorn and so many delicious hard squashes could just hang out in the field and dry we also got our peppers okra is a warm season crop and these are our fruit and seed crops so when we teach the six plant parts which is a lesson in your food core lessons root stems leaves flowers fruits and seeds the fruiting and the seed Edible parts are the ones that need that summer heat to produce all the way to the um, fruit and seeds which we harvest. There are some exceptions, of course. Uh, there's always exceptions. Uh, this pea, which is a fruiting body and a seed that we eat, it actually likes the cool and doesn't like extreme heat. All right, so another important concept to understand is days to harvest. And you'll find this on different planting guides or online. And then it's on your seed packet. So it is written different ways. So this one says, this pumpkin is ready to harvest in 120 days. Here, this cucumber is going to be ready in 62 days. And this is on the front of the seed packet in this case. These days to harvest are set up to be from the day you put the seed in the soil until the day you can harvest it. And so there's a lot of variables there. There's irrigation, there's pests, there's fertility, um, there's weed pressure. So 60 days is a great estimate in ideal situations, but you know, it's not, it's not, an, it's nature, right? So it, it might take less than 62 days by a, a bit, or the plant might be retarded by some lack of um, water or extreme heat or uh, pest pressure. So these are guidelines that we use in our planning. Some crops actually don't say days to harvest or maturity. They say transplant to harvest. That's usually eggplants, peppers, and tomatoes. And what that is saying, they're assuming you have a transplant. You've already started that baby plant indoors or you bought a transplant. And then after you stick your transplanted eggplant in your garden, it's gonna take 80 days. So some of these crops need a little bit more time um, and that's why greenhouses and nurseries are great because they buy us time because we can get transplants in the ground and, um, and not worry about frost um, while they're being grown in greenhouse. So a little activity to do with kids. If you have lots of seeds or images of seed packets, you can have the kids read and learn how to read a seed packet and they could line up from who has the shortest days to harvest, which might be a radish, to something that's the longest days to harvest, which might be a parsnip and have them just line up based on the days to harvest, it's kind of a fun activity for them to understand this concept that is a really big um, concept that we need to consider when we are um, crop planting. So in addition to your days to harvest 
And whether it's a cooler, warm season crop, you really need to think about your school year calendar when you're making your crop plan. So we're going to talk a little bit about crop planning math uh, to have a successful harvest before school gets out. So we're, we're here dealing with this butter crunch lettuce. It's frost tolerant, meaning it's probably a cooler season crop. And it says so in early spring through fall. So we could get this in the ground um, in, in where I live. March 15th is our average last frost date. So that means we could start it. Um, uh, you know, if we had a transplant, we could stick it in the ground um, before March 15th and it would do okay. Um, so, so reading your seed packets is going to give the information, but let's, let's go into a little bit more details on how crop planning happens. So in your resources, you can download this crop planning math sheet. Um, and uh, it's really easy math. Um, so first of all, you want to write down your crop which would be buttercrutch lettuce. Let's say we want to have a salad party on May 30th. Our days to harvest are 65 days. Do the math, count backwards, and we know we would need to be planting around March 25th. Now, if we were using transplants, you could, you're buying time. You could subtract 20 or 30 days and take that off the days to harvest and know that you can get your crop accelerated or catch up in time uh, by putting a transplant out there. And of course, you know, transplants come in different sizes. You can buy a little beansy beans transplants. You can buy really big transplants and eat them the day after you, so you put them in the ground. Um, don't eat all the leaves off your lettuce. Maybe eat a couple and then let it come back and grow. Um, but by, by buying transplants, you're buying time and you could um, mess around with your crop planting a bit. All right, so that's all I really wanted to share. So here are some really great resources for you. Um, if you go to lifelab.org forward slash crop, dash planning. Uh, we have loads of resources and a written explanation of what I just talked about, uh, links to different um, school garden planting guides, links to online calculators, or you just put in your average last frost date and it spits out you, you, a crop plan for you, your climate zone. I also want to point out the idea that you should find your own regional planning guide. Um, and hopefully your states have already developed these for you and some of your previous service members have made it, maybe even made school-friendly planting guides. So here's an example of the one from Tucson, which you know notes winter break and, and summer break. It mentions which things should be started indoors. Um, it has recommended varieties that do well in their region. And the DC School Garden Planting Guide does a similar. So if you are gonna start creating your own planting guide for your own region and for your own school gardens, take a look at these guides because they have some real great extra information that is very handy for school yard um, gardeners. So here's your homework. Um, so uh, we already mentioned this to identify and share um, regional planting guides. Hopefully you have some uh, school garden ones. Um, and then your, your homework is to practice in teams. Um, and, there, and we want you to uh, look at different crops and make an edible crop plant with them. And so there's two ways you can do that. And I'll show you that on the next slide. Um, and then when you're done, um, share this out with your team. So maybe you do this during a training session or you have some time and the next time you all meet together, you share out your planting plants. So here's a little more specifics on um, the crop planting ideas. So one idea is to use food core lessons that involve crop planting. And here's a list of some of the lessons that involve planting things. And it's up to you to figure out of the crops they're suggesting when can you plant them so that you can harvest them while school is still in session? So that's one thing. So just go straight into the food core lessons, <clears throat> look at the crops they're talking about planting, and then make a plan. Or um, at our crop planting page, um, you can download a zipped file of these crop edible crop planting cards. So for example, this is a salsa garden, and it has four different crops that would go into salsa with the information like the days to harvest, and information about growing those plants. And your idea here is pick a date, like for example, we wanna harvest salsa on September 30th, and then do the math, counting backwards with the days to harvest to figure out when you're gonna to have to either start your, trans or start your seeds indoors or buy transplants, put them in the ground so that you'll have a, a harvest date that's a common date. And we have about eight different themed gardens um, of vegetables that you can find on our crop planning page. So with that, I wish you all luck this um, unique year. Uh, I know you'll be spending lots of time in your gardens, um, so make a great edible harvest. Take care.